to my World Issues class. I'm going to take you on a journey through the Earth today and tomorrow. This applies to our current unit, so uh, let's check it out. Here they're trying to show us how we consume a lot of things and they're giving examples of all the different products that you make and basically how the, the products have a long lifetime. Even though we think they disappear, they really don't. So just like we were talking about plastic bottles lasting a long time, well, they're trying to show that here. Over here they're talking about the different spheres. Remember we talked in class about the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the geosphere, and the biosphere? It should all ring a bell to you. So, if you look over here, they've actually got a picture of uh, tires. Right? Just giving an example of some of the things that we use that don't really disappear. Okay, let's, let's continue on here. Here they're trying to show the uh, different layers of the earth and just how uh, complicated the, the ground can be. So remember in class we talked about soil erosion, so if this layer is gone then, well, the soil would be eroded. Okay, check this out. Uh, they're talking about water here, and they're talking about how they actually tapped into a groundwater source here at the, the museum. Um, you may remember the word aquifer. And they're talking about different uh, countries that are dealing with maybe sh water shortages and uh, that type of thing. So here we've got Senegal and Ghana, um, two countries that are notorious for having uh, you know, small amounts of water. Here you've actually got a case. Remember we talked about the Minamata disease uh, while well, we watched the movie The Cove? Well, here you've got a case where people are getting sick because they are um, the basically the arsenic from the gold mining is washing into the water. So here's one case where uh, water becomes contaminated from of, or from runoff, basically. And so uh, when we're looking at streams and rivers, right? Uh, Chika, your presentation on uh, the River Ganges. Okay, one of the big problems is sediment, and here they're talking about the sediment that gets washed into uh, a lot of rivers. In this case, they're talking about Pakistan, actually. Um, the Tarbella Dam, which is what you just saw a picture of. So they're having a real problem with sediment, so they're measuring it and taking care of it, that type of thing. Uh, this one area is actually looking at water distribution and how water is distributed differently around the world. Uh, in this case, they've actually uh, dug a well, which you can see a big well, and this is in Zimbabwe. And then uh, above the well, they've got people doing farming and that type of thing, which I guess uh, helps. One overwhelming thing that you see in all of this is that it takes a lot of uh, effort, you know, a lot of science at hand, things that you really, I have no clue about, but if you study them, you understand them. Uh, in this case, they're talking about soil erosion in particular. So in Swaziland, they're having issues with the soil actually being uh, taken away. Right now, one thing that we talked about in class is that it uh, is often caused by intensive farming, and that's what the problem is here, is that people are farming too much, and then you've got soil being blown away. Here you've got a random uh, toilet and a rubber ducky. That has nothing to do with the class. Um, this is mining. Remember we talked about mining for different minerals. You guys all know blood diamonds. Well, uh, in this case, they're not necessarily talking about uh, diamonds. They're actually talking about uh, copper and tin mine, right? 
Malaysia, notorious for tin mining. Um, not so much today, but this is in Portugal. So this is a, I guess they're talking about the different practices that they go through and how complicated it can be to find the, the right stuff. Uh, now when we produce all of our garbage, it has to go somewhere and it goes often into landfills. Um, they're talking about how in the UK before they had landfills that were just open and the idea was that the waste would just, you know, wash away and then they realized, wow, this is not a good idea. So now they're, they have to make um, basically a cell where the waste can't get out as, you know, they have to contain it so that it doesn't leach out into people's drinking water. see this is uh, a Jaguar engine that is actually made out of uh, aluminum, recycled aluminum. And here you've got fleece. Now you guys don't need that because you live in a warm climate, but if you live in the cold, fleece is really good and it's made from uh, the drinking bottles. Uh, some boots. Okay, I don't know what that has to do with anything. Um, oh, this is made from tires. Sorry. Uh, this one, you've got some nice glass bowls, and they're actually made from an old washing machine door. Huh. Okay, so they're just trying to show that, you know, you can really reuse stuff. This one's got engine lubricant, right? Made from recycled old engine lubricant. Um, so, remember we talked about uh, greenhouse gases in class? Well, here they're actually talking about some of the different greenhouse gases, and one of them is nitrous oxide, right? That's one of the three main ones, right? Nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide, and methane. Nitrous oxide really has a lot to do with acid rain. So um, when rivers become, or rivers and lakes become acidified, uh, that's often the cause. So that happens when we burn greenhouse gases. CFCs have been taken out of most things. They used to be in uh, refrigerators, air conditioning units, that type of thing. Pesticides, you guys are familiar with that. Talked about those in class. We got fungicides, so to get rid of like mushrooms, fungus. Herbicides, insecticides, right? And there are a lot around. Effluents, and we talked about runoff. So if a factory is doing something and they aren't being very responsible, then maybe they are releasing some effluent into lakes. Kind of the situation in Penang. Coral bleaching. Okay, here we've got. Uh, some bleaching that has occurred to this coral because of effluent, right? Not necessarily because of global warming, because of effluent. Come around here. Uh, natural disasters. Okay, uh, we all know that the recent uh, earthquake in uh, Haiti, earthquake in Chile, right? Flooding in Pakistan. In this case, this is a little older, so they're looking at some older uh, things. Okay, so here we've got some coastal erosion. This, this happens if uh, basically uh, we don't take care of our coastlines, right? And this is why you want mangroves there. This is why you want the forests there. This is why you want grasses, so that the coasts can be taken care of and natural disasters don't happen. Okay, so if, it, if, if there's not like a levee or there's coastal erosion, people can really be at risk. Um, here are some examples. Uh, they've actually given some examples of ways to prevent uh, the coastline from eroding. Okay, so you could put up uh, rocks, you could have cement blocks, uh, different types of materials. In class, you may remember that we talked about brown fields as opposed to green fields. These are the sites like gas stations where they're contaminated. Well, here they're talking about brown fields in the UK and the fact that there are a number of them and basically what to do with them, right? So if you're going to try to uh, build there, you have to mitigate the problem. You have to fix it and it sometimes costs a lot of, of money. And here's a big crane.
section is talking about energy. This one is all about oils and oil fields. So how to find it. Remember the guy from the, the film, Age of Stupid? He was working with an oil company looking for oil. Right, so there's the drill bit, right, that uh, obviously BP didn't use so well. Um, what else? So, yeah. Now there's some al alternatives, right? This is conventional energy, which we all know a lot about, as it supplies 90% of our, our uh, energy needs. But then there's the other options, right? So, instead of using this, we can use other things. So you guys know about solar power. Uh, in this case, you've actually got a, a solar panel made by BP, oddly enough. Um, this is an example of what a solar panel looks like. Okay, so I asked you guys in class to decide which one would be best for Malaysia. So, who knows? Here you've got geothermal energy, you all know about that one. Uh, this is looking at a geothermal power plant. This is actually a temperature probe, okay? And they're actually lowered into uh, basically holes in the ground to measure the temperature. Okay, this is nuclear power, right? There's some debate in Malaysia about whether uh, nuclear power is the right way to go. These are some examples of what a nuclear fuel pellet would look like. Just so small, but super dangerous, powerful, that type of thing. And this one is hydroelectricity. And here is the uh, actual turbines um, that would be needed, right? So examples would be like the uh, uh, dams that are being implemented all over the place in uh, places like Malaysia and China. Three Gorges Dam, an example of a, a big dam that's being used for hydroelectricity. And then the wind turbines, which we know so well from the film The Age of Stupid, where he was trying to implement them here in Britain, but the people didn't like them because it was making the landscape ugly. Depends on what you think about that. Uh, so here they're looking at the carbon cycle, basically how carbon moves around and uh, you know goes into the atmosphere, how it gets back into the ground, and as you know, trees act like carbon batteries and here they've almost got a it looks like they've got a tree plugged up like a battery so there you go monitoring the carbon cycle okay so uh, here we're looking at the global impact of things they've actually got a computer to show us how uh, the earth has been impacted in different crops like grapes or corn um, you know where they can grow because changing, right? As the climate changes, uh, where they can grow it changes. Um, here's some sediment, and in particular some peat. And you guys know about peat from the forest fire uh, presentation. Okay, so peat um, is very common in Indonesia, and that's why you get ground fires happening uh, for so long. It's hard to put up the fire because the peat stays lit. So, you know, what can we do? Uh, here, uh, this is actually just to end off. Uh, I don't even know what this thing is. Something to do with uh, with oil, conventional gas. That's like conventional uh, electricity. So, anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it connects with the unit that we've been doing. And I hope everyone is studying hard and having a wonderful.